My name is Ron Kettles, and uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about the Cumberland Presbyterian denomination. And this is Reverend Jack Ryan. We wanted to uh, spend a few moments uh, telling you about not only our denomination, but also our local fellowship here in Bryant. Cumberland Presbyterianism is a, is a pioneer movement that started back in the late 1700s up in the Tennessee and Kentucky area of the frontier of America back in those days. The great revival of 1800 broke out in Kentucky uh, with three Presbyterian churches that were pastored by James McGreedy. And as the revival spread, uh, there became more and more of a need for more preachers out on the frontier, which the Presbyterian Church wasn't at that time able to meet the needs for. Therefore, some of the churches in the Cumberland area of Tennessee and Southern Kentucky began to use lay pastors as a means of supplying churches. And from that came the Cumberland Presbyterian Church, which is a uh, denomination that's centered primarily in the south central part of the United States, as well as several, several foreign countries. Back in 1812, the first Protestant sermon ever preached in the territory of Arkansas was preached by a Cumberland Presbyterian uh, over at what's now part of Maumelle. It's at the Crystal Hill area of Maumelle. And that, that sermon was preached by Reverend jo John Carnahan. Cumberland's established a church there and then later moved on up into the Washington County area around Fayetteville. To Cane Hill to be exact. And they built a church and, and eventually built a college there at Cane Hill. However, the state also placed a co college in that area of the state which put the Cane Hill College out of business. And of course, that, that university is now the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. So the, the Cumberland Pre Presbyterians moved a little bit further southeast and they went to Clarksville there they built the Arkansas Cumberland College, which became University of the Ozarks. And that is the, the, the basically the groundwork that was laid in, in the area of the territory of Arkansas. Now, it's in Saline County, between 1820 and 1826, a Cumberland Presbyterian congregation was formed on the west side of the Saline River, and it was called the Saline Congregation. It was a Cumberland Presbyterian group, and uh, they grew there until they reached kind of a plateau and the membership began to fall off. However, in 1851, they reorganized and they moved into the town of our village of Benton, and there they established a church which became the Benton Congregation. That congregation grew and eventually built a church building down where the federal uh, courthouse or federal building is in Benton itself. Uh, that property was dedicated in 1905. In 1906, there was a disruption in the Cumberland Presbyterian Church as some of the uh, some of the churches voted to reunite with the mother church, the Presbyterian Church in the United States of America. Some of, of the Cumberlands reunited and some didn't. Uh, the Benton congregation voted to, to reunite with the, mother with the mother denomination. That was basically the end of Cumberland, uh, the Cumberland Presbyterian Church for a hundred years until 2005, and Ron, you tell about the start of this congregation. Well, we were like a lot of other people. We all know, <clears throat> all know how fast Saline County has been growing the past few years, and we moved here and uh, realized that there were several families in the area that had come from a Presbyterian background, got together and decided that 
we wanted to try to start a church and we uh, talked uh, the late Reverend Ed Hollenbeck into uh, giving us some advice and getting us started in planning that fellowship here. And we met in the uh, Senior Adult Center over here on 4th Street for some time uh, until they moved to their location to in Bishop Park. We went there for a little while with them and then decided we just needed to be by ourselves. We found this property recently and, and uh, the congregation moved here. Like I said, I think there were four families that, are, that started it in 2005 and uh, we're actively growing the congregation now. So after 99 years of being uh, a non-entity, uh, this group of Cumberland Presbyterians have formed a congregation and are now worshiping here on uh, Marketplace. And uh, we've been here uh, about a year, about uh, six months, and uh, we're hoping to grow in this place. Now, one one of the interesting things that we discovered is that we actually have roots here that predate anything we ever imagined. Uh, down at the northern end of this uh, this area uh, on marketplace there is a very small cemetery and i understand from the the uh, the ancestors of uh, the family that have had that cemetery that that uh, it, they didn't even know that it existed until this area was developed for commercial use and when they were when they were uh, pouring the footing and, and laying out the parking area, they discovered that there was actually a, a graveyard, if you will, right up on the edge of, of Highway 5, which runs uh, right by the side of, of the property where we are. And uh, so there was a cemetery there. The, the, the Bryan Historical Society had done a remarkable job with the, in connection with the... Uh, the Chamber of Commerce and putting a very attractive fence around the cemetery and putting up a sign and it has now been registered as a historic site. Now, what is the cemetery all about? Well, the cemetery is called Kirkpatrick Cemetery. And it seems that back in the, the 1840s, uh, a man by the name of Paisley Kirkpatrick brought his family out here uh, from the east, from the pioneer frontier of uh, Tennessee and, and, uh, and uh, Kentucky and North Carolina, that whole frontier area. He came out and homesteaded here. He bought uh, 725 acres, I believe, which would, in, in, which would cover this whole area where we now are. And he was a blacksmith, and he built a house, and he... Uh, offered this, uh, this home of his as a stagecoach stop. Uh, being a blacksmith, he could uh, uh, reshoe horses as well as uh, mend uh, wagon wheels. He also farmed this area, and so uh, they established their home. Well, uh, this is their family cemetery here on the corner of Marketplace and Highway 5. And there, Paisley Kirkpatrick is buried along with other members of his family, his wife uh, and uh, daughters. And uh, I walked, had walked up to the corner and noticed the name, and I remembered in Presbyterian, Cumberland Presbyterian history that there was a Kirkpatrick way back when. And so doing a little bit of research, we discovered that Paisley Kirkpatrick was actually the nephew of the second Cumberland Presbyterian minister in the denomination that was ordained in the denomination back in 1810. The Cumberland Presbyterians organized on the 4th of February, 1810, and the next month, Mar March 21st, 1810, they ordained Hugh Kirkpatrick, who, as it turns out, was the uncle of our connection uh, with the Kirkpatrick family that uh, was once resident here. By the way, their home 
was originally located at the, at the very same place where the Bryant Water Tower now stands. And I understand, I have not seen it, but I understand that uh, the, uh, the cellar of the house is still visible at that location. So our connection here is that uh, Paisley Kirkpatrick, a Cumberland Presbyterian with long roots in, uh, into the Cumberland Presbyterian uh, family, uh, came here to Arkansas and settled at this location. We think it's providential that having uh, that family come out west and settle in this place that, that here, uh, low these many years later, we have come to the same place, the same ground, to plant the Cumberland Presbyterian Church. And it just, it, uh, to us as a congregation, it confirms our reason for being here. That the, that the seed that was planted back in the mid-1800s has finally borne fruit in 2012. So we're thrilled to be here. I can definitely see God's hand in this. This is, uh, as Beth Moore says, a God stop. This is something that will make you stop and think. So we thank you very much for sharing that information with us. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you.